This phone right here is a big deal. You may not realize it yet, but this phone has far more importance in the United States than you might realize just by looking at it on the surface. Even more so, it is critical for the future of smartphones in the United States. I know some of you don't get it or believe me at this point, but you might by the end of this video. Let me explain why the OnePlus 12 is critical for the future of smartphones. This is my OnePlus 12 review. Of course, if you wanna pick up the OnePlus 12, there are links in the description. At first glance, the OnePlus 12 doesn't seem like a big deal. It's simply another phone from OnePlus and one of many other phones out there in the world. As my Discord would say, it's a phone of all time. In many ways, they're right. Are you confused yet by this video? <laughs> you have a right to be. The OnePlus 12 is an iterative design of the OnePlus 11 with that same circle watch-like camera bump, the matte black color returns, and they added this green color with a marble-like appearance. Some people like it, some people hate it. Which one are you? If you're not a fan of the green marble look, want a cool cooler look or want to customize and protect your phone, you should check out a skin from channel sponsor Dbrand. I have their new Carnage skins and wow, this is one of the coolest skins they've come out with. But of course, they have a ton of other options to choose from to fit your taste and style for the OnePlus 12 and many other phones and devices. If you want to pick up a skin, check out the link in the description. The inside of the OnePlus 12 has the typical updates or standards you see every year with the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor and 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM. Eventually, that's going to have like the whole alphabet in it. <laughs> and it has fast and smooth performance in gaming because of the optimized OS. The rest is typical iterative updates or must haves like IP65 water and dust resistance ratings, wireless charging that they brought back after removing it in the prior models, and the return of the alert slider. So what's genuinely new about it? Maybe the 6.82 inch display with a peak brightness of 4500 nits that you can still use even when there's water on the screen. Or maybe it's the insane vapor chamber for cooling. But most people probably won't notice or care about that because it's kind of out of sight and out of mind and a bit abstract. So you could say all those things wouldn't make this phone critical. The reality is that the OnePlus 12 is an excellent phone with great battery life, outstanding performance, and a premium filling build. It is amongst many other phones that you could say the same thing about. I could almost take the same review template, replace the phone's name, and repeatedly put out the same video and it would work. So why is this phone a big deal? To answer that, we have to look at the other phones. Here is the competition in America. The Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, and the Google Pixel 8 Pro. This is the best of the best in the United States. Oh, sorry, that wasn't the S24 Ultra, that was the S23 Ultra, the previous year's model. My bad. The iPhone though, I can confirm is the most recent model, not last year's. Do you see what I'm doing here? In the United States, many have said and feel that smartphones have largely stagnated. Each year, we only see minor iterative improvements between generations. If you were to only live and view things from the American bubble, these phones are fantastic. They're seen as highly mature, so there's little room to innovate or push the boundaries. That's why they're less exciting than before, right? If you live in America, do you feel that way? Now, things are different when you step outside of the American bubble. You'll find crazy phones from Xiaomi, Vivo, and Oppo, which merge with OnePlus and makes this phone right here. Many people in America don't know about these phones, don't know what they have to offer, and don't know how they're pushing the boundaries in some pretty insane ways that make them exciting and innovative. The saying goes, ignorance is bliss, but in in this case, ignorance is a miss. Between the Google Pixel iPhone and Samsung Galaxy, the cameras are largely unchanged with minor improvements year to year, and they all use the same small old sensors year after year. If there is an improvement, it's mostly to one of the camera sensors, while the rest are still less capable than the primary sensor. So they lean on tons of software to compensate for issues when you use small old sensors. Despite the fantastic software, it's still not as good as what you get on a camera like this with a large sensor and great glass. They do this not because they're there aren't any bigger sensors or lenses that are higher quality or tech out there that can solve the issues largely with good hardware alone. We have examples of how to get there or what needs to happen and we understand the physics of what results in a better image without needing tons of software to fix things. Now I'm not against the software that's being used, it's really cool, but leaning so much on the software compared to the hardware can create a lot of issues. They likely use the sensors and hardware they do because they're complacent and they want higher profit margins because there's a lack of competition and you don't know any better. And when Apple has nearly 62% of the entire American smartphone market, why do they need to push the boundaries of the camera? I don't have an excuse for Samsung or Google doing the same thing other than you'll still buy what they put out anyways because you're loyal and it's the only option you have and are used to. Three brands to choose from for a flagship phone is limited. That's like only having McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King as your only real options 
to get a burger. America is great. I was born and raised in America. It's very easy to not think about or know what's outside of America, and that's probably because it's amazing in America. You don't have to look outside to live your life well. The biggest downside with that is that you miss out on many amazing things, so it's worth exploring outside of these borders. Outside of the United States, we have phones that do things quite differently from the options we have in America. Many of them have massive one-inch sensors that are 60% bigger than the primary sensor on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and 10 times bigger than some of the sensors that you'd find on Samsung Galaxy Ultra models. That's a big deal as larger sensors create excellent natural bokeh without the need for portrait mode software to fake it. There's better low light performance, which means the need for software processing to make low light images look good is reduced and you get better dynamic range and less noise amongst many other benefits. That's just how the physics of larger sensors work. Then you have phones like the Oppo Find X7 Ultra and Xiaomi 14 Ultra that not only have one inch sensors for the main cameras, but also have flagship large 50 megapixel camera sensors as their other cameras. The other three. <laughs> it's crazy that these other smartphone brands have these sensors that are so much better than Apple, Samsung, and Google, and they also have more of them on top of it. Their weakest camera hardware is more up to date, better, and more capable than the best camera lens options from Apple, Samsung, and Google. Add in the big three's other camera lenses often have a notable drop in quality and capability compared to the primary lens. Just move between the main camera, the ultra wide, and the telephoto in low light, and you can see the drop in quality clearly. Then there's crazy stuff with stabilization, adjustable apertures, which make more sense now compared to back in the day with the Galaxy S9 series, insanely good telephoto lenses that make the S24 Ultra look like child's play, wide ranges of focal lengths that cover the entire zoom range without relying on digital zoom for everything, dual periscope cameras, and more. Add in how some like Xiaomi have processing that looks more like a film camera or like a Fuji X106 camera with an opinionated and stylistic tuning, or Oppo with a more natural traditional camera-like look. Meanwhile, American-focused phones continue to produce photos that look like a smartphone took them with their over-processed, over-saturated, over-sharpened, AI artifact-filled smartphone-looking cameras. The reality is that there are other phones out there that have cameras that try to look more like a traditional camera rather than a smartphone camera. So that finally brings us to the OnePlus 12 and why it is critical. If you watch my review of the OnePlus Open, which you can find in the link in the description or the card up here, the camera is essentially the same between the OnePlus Open and the OnePlus 12, which is excellent. It looks great with a natural bokeh, outstanding low light performance, and a natural traditional camera look and tuning. The OnePlus Open is undoubtedly more exciting because of its form factor and how it works with additional screens, but the OnePlus 12 is also a great phone. The fantastic camera on the Open was and still is a big deal amongst that category, and having the same camera on the OnePlus 12 is undoubtedly great to see as it brings modern and larger sensors like the 1 over 1.4 inch 50 megapixel Sony Light 808 sensor that gets fantastic natural depth the field, low light performance, and natural detail, along with the two other half inch sensors for both of the periscope, telephoto, and ultra wide camera. Add in more natural tunings that result in images that are more like a traditional camera, and we get a glimpse and taste of what's happening outside of America. Then there's the shocking price of only $800 before they're easy to get $100 or more trade in discount credits. It just makes it more impressive. It's insane that you can effectively get a OnePlus 12 for $700 when you have other phones that now cost nearly twice as much much with less capable cameras. It makes you realize the profit margins on the phones from the big three. Now it's fair to say that the OnePlus 12 is less impressive or groundbreaking than the Xiaomi 14 Ultra or the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. But if you look closely enough, you can see how the OnePlus 12 is a derivative design of the Oppo Find X7 Ultra with fewer of the fantastic camera specs and hardware. But the point is not whether it's industry leading, the point is whether it's leading the industry in America. Competition is good. It keeps companies from being complacent and giving us the bare minimum. It forces them to provide consumers with more, to give us better, and to be competitive in return. It improves the quality of our experience. That's why the OnePlus 12, and really OnePlus as a brand, is critical in the United States. At the current moment, they're not gonna sell as much as even Google, and they're not big enough to put a big enough fire under all three of the big three's butts yet, but OnePlus has had two solid releases in a row between the Open and 12. The trajectory that they're going on is pushing the boundaries and shaking up the status Quo. Just look at how the OnePlus Open has put a fire under Samsung to respond to it and do better. The OnePlus Open is objectively a far better, more refined, and higher quality device in terms of its hardware and camera. Let's hope that the OnePlus 12, the 13, 14, and many other devices from OnePlus
plus to come continue to push the boundaries. Let's hope that they don't lead the industry in America, but match the excellent industry leading hardware we see from global counterparts like we see from Opal and bring it to America. And maybe over time, we'll not only have three major smartphone companies to choose from, but four. And maybe we'll have insane cameras on all of them at the bleeding edge of where technology is and is going rather than what we've had that has been good enough for years already. We, you, me, the consumer, we deserve the best, whether outside or inside of America. And hopefully the OnePlus 12 is a trend towards that end. So do you think the OnePlus 12 has a critical role in American smartphones? Do you see what I see? And do you hope for what I hope for? I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.